welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. I bet you don't know where spaghetti comes from. I grow my own. <laughs> I call this tale The Spaghetti Man. There is a shop in Venice that never opens, and yet the place is not deserted. Once a year, in the absolute deadest part of night, a giant silver pasta machine grinds into action. In the kitchen, Mrs King was having the usual problem. I don't want that muck, shouted Timothy. It makes me want to be sick. Hold fire, lad, hold fire, whispered Mr King. But Timothy was in no mood to hold fire. He shut his eyes and held his breath. Your food won't go away just because you've closed your eyes, sobbed his mother. Then I shall make it go away, said Timothy, as he picked up his plate and threw it at the sink. The food hit the window with a splat and slid down the glass into the goldfish bowl. In case you're in any doubt, Timothy was a hideous, squealing, mealtime monster who wouldn't eat his food. Somebody needed to teach him a lesson. Timothy heard the latch click on the front door. Who's there? said Mr King. There was no reply. Timothy heard the creak of new leather as a pair of heavy boots walked towards the kitchen across the wooden floor in the hall. <laughs> Mrs King was too upset to have heard anything. Timothy saw the long black shadow as it passed the light outside the cellar door. This is no time for jokes, shouted Mr King, rising from his chair nervously. I was in the army, you know, trained to kill and all that. But when Mr King pulled the door open, there was nobody there. Mr King went into the hall to investigate, taking Mrs King with him just in case there was any trouble. Timothy was left on his own. A paper napkin slid off the edge of the table as if somebody had just brushed past it. And Timothy thought he could smell flour. No, he was sure he could smell flour and baking. The sort of smell you get when you go out for a pizza. He wanted to scream, but he couldn't. There was a hand over his mouth and something was scratching his cheek. No, not something. Lots of things like long fingernails. Only they weren't as thick as fingernails. They were more like sticks or pins or spaghetti. That was the smell. Then his parents came back into the room and the smell went away. I think we've just had a visit from the Spaghetti Man, said his mother. Who? said Timothy. Children who don't eat their food are pastified in his factory, she explained. So I'd eat up if I were you. Boulder Dash! He sneered, and he carried on behaving badly. I want to go to the loo! Not in the middle of breakfast. This isn't breakfast. This is a cow pat. And he left the table without asking to get down. <laughs> Mrs King had finally had enough. 
she grabbed Timothy by the seat of his pants, frog marched him back to the table, and told him that he could sit there all day for all she cared until he had finished his toast. Timothy sat there all day. In fact, he sat there all the next day as well. On the morning of the third day, Mr. King went off to work as usual, and Mrs. King went shopping. After she'd gone, Timothy waited a whole second before scampering upstairs for revenge. He'd just put the plug in the bath and was turning on the taps when he heard the latch click on the front door. Ha ha, she was back. Wait till she saw the flood. As the water rose in the bath, he heard the squeak of her new leather boots climbing the stairs. As he turned the taps up to full power, he saw her shadow creep under the door. He laughed triumphantly as the first drop of water splashed over the rim and the bathroom door was flung open. See? I'm never eating toast again! shouted Timothy. But he was shouting to himself because there was nobody there. Just that smell again of flour and baking and spaghetti! Timothy awoke to find himself in a room full of children with grumpy faces and labels on their coats. Tall, thin children were marked up as spaghetti. The fat ones had macaroni written all over them and the little kids were labelled as Fasta Pasta. He looked down at his own. Lasagna, he wailed. Yuck! Absolutely my all-time worst food ever! He leapt onto a table. Cheer up, he shouted. No way are we going to be turned into pasta. The Spaghetti Man is just a story that our mums and dads made up to make us eat our food. It's a joke, and I'm going home. Guess who I'm having for dinner tonight? Laughed the Spaghetti Man. It was a cruel laugh that made the children suddenly wish they weren't there. But of course, they were. Meal times without Timothy were never the same again. They were quieter. Mrs. King was rather pleased, and Mr. King hadn't noticed that Timothy was missing. So Mrs. King never told him. Thank you, dear. Their lives went on pretty much as normal. Mr. King went off to work, and Mrs. King stayed at home and prepared their evening meal. Tonight, it's lasagna! <laughs> Hmm. I'm delicious. Oh, I'm sorry. How rude of me. Have you met little Jimmy Jones? You'd like him. Needs a touch more parmesan, but otherwise very tasty. <laughs> Whoops! I'm all fingers and thumbs today. Or rather, I'm not. 